Good evening, Hannah McInnes here on Times Radio. Well, we're in the middle of our culture crunch section and I'm joined now by Giuseppe Albano here in the studio. He's the director of the Freud Museum and their current exhibition there, which we're going to be talking about, is called Tracing Freud on the Acropolis. And also in the studio is Bradley Hemmings, who is the festival director for Greenwich and Docklands International Festival. Thank you both for coming in. It's wonderful to see you this evening. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Bradley. We've got two very different, very exciting things here, but that's why we crunch the culture in this way. Tell us about the festival. How long has it been going for and what sorts of things are on there? Well, this is our 28th and it's great to be here. Um, we're excited. One week tonight we'll be opening um, the 28th Greenwich and Docklands International Festival with a superb um, event that that takes place in Woolwich. It's called Open Lines. Uh, it involves uh, a tightrope walker who will walk, Tatiana Mosia Bagonga will walk across a tightrope in Woolwich, supported by local community members who will hold the guy ropes, which will support her journey. So it's a really, it's a way of talking about how we need to work together to support each other. And um, so that will open the festival. Everything we do is free and outdoors. The festival runs from the 25th of August to the 10th of September. Um, all the events are free. They're all on our website, festival.org. Uh, and um, it's it's really... Uh, an opportunity for people to come together to celebrate, to be together in public space um, and to experience things that you can experience nowhere else in London. I'm fascinated to hear that it's free. How does that work for everybody? Well, the festival is possible as a result of the vast amounts of partnership development work that have to happen throughout the year. I mean, one of the most um, thrilling events this year is being developed in partnership with the City of London and their new um, Destination City initiative. So right. two festivals are working in partnership, the Bartholomew Fair and the Greenwich and Docklands International Festival, to bring a company from California, Bandeloupe, who've never appeared in the UK before, to create this extraordinary aerial dance performance on St Paul's Cathedral. That will happen on the 31st, the 1st and the 2nd of September. So we're deeply excited about that. So I've just, just before I come to you, um, to Giuseppe, I just need you to explain that. There's going to be on St Paul's Cathedral. What What is that going to look like? Uh, it's... Uh to be <laughs> seen, to be believed. Yeah. But we are, this is a company that have worked on UNESCO buildings throughout the world. Uh, it will be a piece of vertical dance that will take place on the south portico of the cathedral. There's an inscription on that side which came from Wren sort of stumbling across a gravestone while constructing or imagining where the centrepiece of the cathedral would be, which said Resurgam. I will rise again. And we're giving that new meaning in terms of our festival, which this year has a theme of acts of hope, of thinking about resilience coming out of the many difficult experiences that we're all going through at the moment and creating an aerial ballet that will will occupy the whole of that magnificent south portico of the cathedral um, as the sun's going down, so the light will be beautiful um, for thousands of people um, across that whole magnificent facade. That sounds absolutely wonderful. Just remind us of the dates. Uh, 31st of August, 1st and 2nd of September. Wonderful. Uh, Giuseppe, uh, as I mentioned, director of the Freud Museum, tell us about this current exhibition, Tracing Freud on the Acropolis. It's about a, a holiday that he took to Greece, as I understand. That's correct, Hannah. It's a holiday that Sigmund Freud took with his younger brother Alexander in 1904. Uh, quite by accident, they had intended to go to Corfu, but uh, ferociously hot weather in Corfu at that time, I'm afraid that rings some alarm bells for us today, but that forced them to go to Athens instead. And it was Freud's first and only trip to Athens. And it was a profoundly unsettling experience for him in many ways. In the exhibition, visitors are invited to trace Freud's footsteps, to discover his trip, to discover Athens as he saw it in 1904. And, I mean, without giving too much away so that you take, <laughs> take us through the whole experience and people don't go, what does that look like? What, what sort of experience do people have when they come to, to do that? So they will discover the, the myriad of emotions that Freud felt on seeing 
Well, the world's most famous archaeological monument, the world's most romantic ruin, something that Freud himself had dreamed of all of his life. He'd been a lover of antiquity since boyhood. He'd collected antiquities um, since the age of 40. He was 48 when he visited Athens. It was really the realization of a life dream for him. But he felt a profound sense of astonishment, of disbelief that it actually exists. He compares it to seeing the Loch Ness Monster. It's that unreal. And even more unsettling, he realizes when he's standing at the top of the Acropolis Hill that he has surpassed the life's achievements of his father, Jacob. He has done what his father could only ever dream of doing, and he feels tremendous guilt. He feels a guilt about that. He feels a tremendous guilt about that. And unusually for Freud, he was pretty much lost for words. He couldn't fathom the experience. He couldn't actually come to terms with it until over three decades later, in 1936, two years before he moves to London, he decides to put pen to paper and write about the experience and try to process it. It was a profoundly disturbing experience for him. So everything that you put together is taken from his writing, from his reflections? That's right. From his reflections, we have his notebook, we have the essay itself, which people will be able to see. We have objects that he collected from Greece, um, some of which he, he purchased in Vienna in antique shops. You will see his very, very favorite object, which is a little bronze figurine of the goddess of Athena, which was right at the center of his desk, and which, when he had to flee Vienna, flee the Nazi persecution in off from Austria to London in 1938. It was the very first object that he ordered to be rescued. So it was very important to Freud. You will see all of those things. But more than anything, you will enter the world of Athens as Freud saw it in 1904. Now, given that you're both in the studio and I can see you both very interested in each other's projects and why wouldn't you be? I just wonder if you had a question for each other because I could see you looking so intrigued, both of you, as the other one were talking. So uh, I, I would ask you first whether you well, uh, have a question I, for Giuseppe. I, I, my reflection on, on meeting Giuseppe earlier on is that, that our festival is very much based upon the archaeology and the history of, of Greenwich and East London. That It always strikes me that cities and places are built on what lies underneath them. And, yes. um, and this is very much the, the legacy of Freud as well in terms of how, the way in which we, const we construct ourselves and our stories. Uh, we're very much about story and place. Um, uh, we're in the city of London, as I mentioned, with um, um, the 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 wonderful Resurgam performance. But you know, near there, there is an an amphitheater under the under the Guildhall, which you know, it, it, the, yes. all our all our all our lives are built on what has gone before. And I'm I'm so fascinated. I want to come um, to the Freud Museum to see this exhibition and and learn more about it. We were talking about Athena, and I'm almost thinking of next year's theme. This year is Acts of Hope, and I don't know the idea of um of enlightenment and truth feels like important for next year so you're yes. giving him fodder for his yes. festival for next year <laughs> and similarly if you have anything uh, to reflect on um from, from giuseppe of, of what bradley was talking about because you looked similarly fascinated well bradley had a really inspiring conversation earlier about london almost being like the successor to athens and rome this kind of ancient metropolis par excellence with the kind of layers and layers of history mm. that's what london is today even though in London you maybe have to work a little bit harder to find those layers, but they are there. And I thought, Bradley, your description of St. Paul's Cathedral, I could imagine Freud seeing that as a modern-day tourist to London and having that same sense of astonishment and derealization, um, just as he believed you know, when, when he saw the, the Acropolis in 1904, I could imagine a modern-day Freud feeling that same, sen same sense of astonishment at seeing St. Paul's Cathedral come to life that's in 2023. So, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so before we let you both go, a chance to uh, tell listeners how long they can, uh, how long they have really to come yes. to see both the Greenwich um, and Docklands International Festival starts and finishes... It's 25th of August to the 10th of September and all the programme is on the uh, festival website, festival.org. So it's a very easy one to remember. And it's free, which is also very exciting. And tell us about the this particular exhibition, perhaps the next one. We've got a few uh, moments to do so when people can come and where they have to go and, and how to get involved. So the exhibition is open till the 4th of January next year. So there's plenty of time to see it, but do come as soon as possible um, while it's fresh in people's imaginations. 
Christmas. Um, we were open from Wednesday to Sunday. Sadly, 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 we're not free because we received no um, public funding. Um, so there is an entrance fee, but it's well worth the entrance fee. Well, it's absolutely wonderful to have you both here in the studio. 